was wrapped around his neck like a Brahmana thread. And when he was still just a few months old, at that time the Rathiantra festival took place, and the mother brought the child out and placed the child on the chariot of Lord Jagannath. And at that time the garland fell from Lord Jagannath onto the child. So Srila Bhakti Nantakur had prayed to the Lord to send children who he could train, who he could help, who could grow up to help him to spread the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, from his childhood, he was taught by Bhaktivinoda Thakur all the teachings of the Shastras, and he had memorized the Bhagavad Gita when he was still a young child. Another incident which took place indicating the spiritual power of the child was that when one day Bhaktivinoda Thakur had brought some mangoes home from the market to be offered to the deity. So the child, Bimala Prasad, took some mango before they were offered to the deity. And when Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw this, then he told the child, Oh, you have taken the mango before it is offered. That is an offense. So but the child took the words of his father very seriously and he vowed that for the rest of his life he would never take mangoes again. And whenever people would bring mangoes to him, he would simply say, Oh, I cannot take, I am an offender. So that shows the type of determination which Bhimala Prasad had from his very childhood. It is said that Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, uh, as a, he, he never thought of his father as just simply being his own father, but he, he would address Bhakti Vinod Thakur as Mahashaya Thakur. So he was carefully taught all the principles of devotion from his father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And while his father was still present, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was regularly with him as his secretary and as his servant. He would, he would fan his father and he would give different services for him, bringing food and doing different menial services on behalf of his father. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, however, pointed out to his son that you still have to get initiation. I cannot initiate you because I'm your father. 
you have to take initiation from some other person. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati told his father that, that apart from you there is no pure Vaishnava. All these other people are they're not genuine Vaishnavas. How could I ever accept any of them as my guru? So Bhaktivinoda Thakur then mentioned to his son that no, this Gorki Das Babaji, he is a genuine, sincere soul. I think he will be a good spiritual teacher for you. However, there was a big difference between the two persons. Gorky Shordan's Papaji was an illiterate person. He had never had the opportunity to take any formal education. He was a genuinely renounced person, but he did not have any real education, so he could hardly read or write. And on the other hand, Bhimala Prasad, the, the son of Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, he was a, a very learned scholar, highly educated in all kinds of philosophy and teachings and languages. He'd studied all the scriptures and he'd also compiled a, a treatise on the Surya Siddhanta, which is a book on astrology. And when he wrote that book, it was so appreciated that the Calcutta University offered him a seat as a professor in their university. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati refused to accept that he did not have anything to do with mundane education. Actually, when he was a young man, he had studied for some time at the university. And during that time, during that time, he formed a society for brahmacharis and he recruited a number of young men to take vows as brahmacharis. We, we could understand how powerful a preacher, how powerful a teacher he was, that he could attract young men to take the vows of celibacy. Nowadays people find it very impossible for them to even consider to take such vows. But Siddhanta Sarasati, as a student, he had recruited many people to be his followers. But 
And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati maintained that vow throughout his life. So he was very powerful in his determination and in his spiritual knowledge, he was very strong. And being the son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was born in a very uh, aristocratic, scholarly family. But he was, he came before Gorkishorda's Babaji and requested him for initiation. So Gorkishorda's Babaji told him, how can I accept you? I'm an illiterate person and you're such a learned scholar. How could I ever be your guru? And so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati pleaded with Gorkishoda's Babaji, No, I need you as a spiritual master. And my own father has recommended you, and I think I can also surrender to you. Please accept me as your disciple. And so Gorkishoda's Babaji then said, Well, I'm, I will ask Lord Krishna and see what he says. Give me some time, let me ask Krishna, see what he thinks. So after some time, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati again came back to Lord Kishoda's Babaji and requested him, Did you ask Lord Krishna? Did you get a reply? And Gorkishuddha's Babaji said, Well, I asked him, he didn't respond, they didn't get any answer. Gorkishuddha's Babaji said, You have to wait. So Bhakti Siddhanta said, He waited more time, and again and again he came and requested. What happened? Are you ready to accept me? So Bhakti Vinod Thakur told his son, if you do not get initiation, your life is useless. You have to be accepted, but you have to be initiated by a spiritual teacher. So then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati came before Gorkhashoda Das Bhamaji and he told him, If you don't accept me, then I'm going to give up my life. I'm ready to commit suicide. I'll just give up my life because my life is useless. So, hearing these serious words from um, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, then Gorti Shodas Babaji then finally said, Well, all right. And he arranged the arranged initiation. So that's it. How he got the name Vrishavana Devi Daitaya Das. Devi Daitaya Das. Meaning, this guy in Sri Vrishavana Devi Daitaya Kripadaya Krishna Sambandha Vidyana Daitaya Prabhupada Maha. 
There are four pranam mantras in glorification of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. So that, that is the second one. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Vrishavanavi Devi Daitaya Das, which is another name of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, meaning one who is favored by Srimati Radharani. And he is the ocean of transcendental mercy. And the deliverer of the science of Krishna. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was initiated by Gorky Shodas Babaji. And he was the only disciple of Gorky Shodas Babaji. Mm. So it happened when his spiritual master disappeared, when Gorky Shodas Babaji departed from the world. Before he had left the world, he had requested the devotees that you should drag my body through the streets of Navadweep. So when Gorky Shodas Babaji left the world, a number of people wanted to get his body to make, it, to make the Samadhi of Gorky Shodas Babaji on their land because they knew that if the Samadhi of a great soul is there, that many people will come and they'll give donations. However, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, at that time he was a Brahmachari, he was Bhimati, and so he came there and he challenged, he said, I am the actual, I am the only son of Gorky Shodas Babaji, I am his only disciple, so his body should actually be given to me. But his, uh, his request to be dragged through the streets of Navadwe should not be taken seriously. It was just an expression of his humility. And he explained that you, we should not take such a request of, a, of Babaji Maharaj seriously. They were saying, well, you're just a brahmachari, you have no position, you're just a brahmachari, you can't do it, well, why should you get the body? But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati claimed, he talked to them, he said, I am the actual disciple of Gorkishore Das Babaji. I am the one who has been initiated by him. He accepted me as his disciple. And said, all of you people, you want to take the body, but you people are all debauchees. None of you have followed strictly any religious principles. If you have followed the principles for even a, a, a month or even a week, 
or even a few days, then I will give you his body. But you are also fallen. None of you keep any religious principle. And you simply want to take his body for your own material benefit. And so Shuva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati defeated them and he would not allow them to take the divine body of the spiritual master. So Shuva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati as a young man he took a vow to chant the holy name of the Lord a billion times. At, at that time he was living in Mayapur at the Yoga Peet where a small temple had been established by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was living there. It was like a jungle at that time. There were many wild animals, there were no people, there was no development. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was living there alone and he was just sitting, sitting under an umbrella. So he did great austerities for a long time. It took many years to complete the vow to chant one billion names. Shortly after Gorky Shurdas Babaji left the world, his own father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, also departed from the world. So the mission to continue the preaching of Bhaktivinoda Thakur was taken up by Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. And in order to fulfill the mission of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had to initiate himself as a sannyasi. He had been a brahmachari throughout his life, but at a certain, at a certain point, with the disappearance of his father, he saw the need to take up fully the vow of renunciation. And so, it, while he was residing there in the Chaitanya Math in Navadvip, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati one day went into the altar and with the curtains drawn, it is said that his spiritual master, Gorky Shurdas Babaji appeared to him and initiated him in the renounced order of life. And then he began under well he, he was he was very renounced there in Mayapur, but his renunciation and his scholarship was observed by another young man and the young man encouraged him to come to Calcutta and to begin preaching. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati began to preach. He went off to Calcutta and he was staying at a place called Uta Danga. 
which is a property which has recently been acquired by ISKCON. And so while he was staying at Uta Danga, many different young men came there and they heard from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasa. And so it was just over 100 years ago, in the year 1922, when our own founder Acharya Bhaktivedanta Swami, as a young man, was brought there and he met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasa. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati immediately, immediately uh, 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 welcomed uh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami, uh, welcomed him and encouraged him. He said, You're a nice young man. Why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya to the world? So Srila Prabhupada describes the incident. He said at that time he was a follower of Gandhi and he was dressed in the traditional clothes of a follower of Gandhi. He was wearing the cloth, which is called kadi, which means hand-woven cloth. Yeah, you know, nowadays most of the cloth is from the mills. It's not from hand looms, it's from the mills, it's manufactured, it's a lot of chemicals in it. But Mahatma Gandhi, he was promoting village industry and he was encouraging people to use the cloth made in the villages, which is cotton, which is cotton pure cotton, and it, it's uh, very cool and very nice to wear in the warm weather. And so Shri Prabhupada said he was dressed in the kirta and dhoti of a follower of Gandhi. So when he was challenged to teach the message of Lord Chaitanya, Sri Prabhupada responded by saying, well, we have to get independence for our country first. And so Gandhi was more of a politician than a saintly person. Among saintly persons, he was a politician, but among politicians, he was a saintly person. <laughs> so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati immediately rebuked this argument and said, No, the message of Lord Chaitanya is so important. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. So Srila Prabhupada remarks how he said from the very first meeting I was impressed with the the, the spiritual potency of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasat. 
他怕得不易说，我从一开始就被学了巴蒂斯丹的三套过了，小而有力的灵性力量所深深的感感染了。He, he, he, at that time, Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada had recently married and he had a young family, young children. So he said, I was not able to immediately take up anything to actually assist him in his preaching. Now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his preaching, he was in promoting more grihastas and encouraging the grihastas that you are the pure Vaishnavas. But it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati who began to initiate people as brahmacharis and then also as sannyasis. So, so some people claim that this Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati is doing different from his father. He is not presenting the real message which his father was presenting. But it, it is argued that Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati understood the real mission of Bhakti Vinod Thakur which was to distribute the message of Lord Chaitanya everywhere. And in order to facilitate the spreading of Lord Chaitanya's movement, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati recruited people as brahmacharis and as sannyasis and sent them out for preaching work. Bhakti Vinod Thakur had been preaching more in the villages, more in the country, in the small villages, and the, to the farmers, to the people, who were working on the land. But it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati who went more to the cities and began preaching in the towns and cities and establishing temples there also. So Shishrapati was mixed with all their fruit of desire. Chaitanya. 
嗯树立很多很大的攀吧，并且他也有这些嗯木偶木偶的这些展示，展示主产家的肖师峰。Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would come to the temple and if he saw that the temple had accumulated a good amount of money in the bank, he would use it to put on a big exhibition of Chaitanya Leela. The, do, the devotees would protest to their Guru Maharaj. They would say, Oh Guru Maharaj, you're spending all the money. We won't have any money to buy boga and maintain the temple. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would look at them and smile and say, Yes, you have to go out and preach. And he liked the devotees to go and preach to everyone. He didn't like them just to go to rich people. He thought they should go to everyone. He liked to see the devotees come back and he would see what they, what they collected. If someone just came with a lot of money, he wouldn't be so impressed. But if somebody came with some money and some rice and some vegetables, some different, different things, then he thought, this is good, you're preaching nice. And it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati who ordered the devotees that even on a Kadasi, that fasting is not as important as preaching. It happened, there was a program taking place. The invitation came to the temple that they wanted the devotees to come and do kirtan and do some preaching. But the devotees said, no, no, today's ecodacy, we're all fasting. We can't come. But when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati heard this, he said, then cook prasadam. Everyone take prasadam and go for the program. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was also very fond of book production and he had been a daily newspaper. So that they would print a newspaper and every day the devotees would go out and try to distribute the newspaper. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would edit the articles and he would see every if, if, if they had print, put, put the name Krishna and the Mahamantra there, then he would say yes, print it. He wanted to see that importance was given to the holy name of Lord Krishna. And if somebody would go out and distribute the newspaper and collect even a few paisas, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would congratulate them and say, Well done. So, Srila Prabhupada, our own Srila Prabhupada, 
took his inspiration for book production from the desire of his own spiritual master. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was the follower of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He followed the mission of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, printing and publishing books and giving commentaries on important shastras. So we are so much indebted today to the glorious service of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. He is for a proper disciple, he is like the spiritual grandfather. So Srila Prabhupada said, Grandfather is more merciful than the father. Father will be strict. Father will always complain and find the fault. But grandfather will be kind and comforting and encouraging. So Shul Prabhupada told us we should also uh, take shelter of the, the mission of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and work also in that same mode as he had to distribute this message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was sometimes called Nashringa Guru because he was very powerful, very bold and ferocious in preaching against those who did anything to oppose the teachings of pure Devotion. was more gentle in his preaching. At one point there was one man when Radha Charan Babaji, who had made his own mantra, and he was propagating this mantra to people, Bhaktivinoda Thakur pointed out that this is nonsense, this is not proper. So at that time, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was there, and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was preaching very strongly to the man. But this man would not take any good instruction, and he continued to propagate this bogus mantra. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would become so angry at the man that finally Bhakti Vinod Thakur told him, better you go away from here because you will just simply make enemies. And so at that time, Bhakti Vinod Thakur sent Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati over to Mayapur to stay there and take care of the temple there. But he was generally very powerful, very strong in opposing all the, and all the deviations which were taking place. 
那些偏离的教导，他是非常坚决、强强有力的。There is many different apa sampradayas, meaning sampradayas which are against the real principles of the sampradaya. 但是有很多阿帕桑帕达雅，就是其实是反对人真正的桑帕达雅原则的这些伪伪桑帕达雅。So Bhakti Vinod Thakur had identified these, and it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati who preached very strongly against them. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he recognized these wrong sampradaya, and his son also opposed these wrong sampradaya. He exposed all the deviations, all the teachings which were against the teachings of Rupa Goswami. He exposed all the deviations, all the teachings which were against the So he was a very strict follower of Srila Rupa Goswami. He is Srila Rupa Goswami, very strict follower. And we are following in the footsteps of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And we are following in the footsteps of Bhakti Power and preaching, he could attract so many souls, many thousands of disciples were initiated by him. And of course, he tried his best to preach in Europe, and he sent disciples to England and to Germany. And even he was supporting them. He was sending money from India to the UK and to Germany to maintain his disciples while they were there. He also sent money from India to the UK and to Germany to maintain his disciples while they were there. He also sent money from India to the UK and to Germany to maintain his disciples while they were there. He also sent money from India to the UK and to Germany to maintain his disciples while they were there. He also took up the the Navadvip Mandal Parikrama, and he brought thousands of devotees on Parikrama around the islands of Navadvip. He also organized the Navadvip Parikrama outside Navadvip. He organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this Mandal Parikrama. He also organized thousands of people from all over the world to join this There was even a plan. They hired some people. They wanted to kill him, and they tried to bribe the policeman. So, like that, it, it, his, 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 he risked his life to preach Krishna consciousness. And another time when they went to Vrindavan on Parikrama, all the shops closed. They didn't want to sell any food to, and to give any food to any of the people from the from the the Vaishnavas from the Gaudiya. So there was so much opposition, but Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati remained very strong and determined and pushed forward the Krishna conscious mission. Thank you. 